Mr. Hickman, I, I represent Georgia, and, and we have a saying in Georgia, there are two Georgias, there's Atlanta and everywhere else, and I represent everywhere else, right. okay. and that includes rural Georgia, sure. and we've got a lot of rural area in South Georgia that I represent, and we've got a lot of crops and a lot of farms, uh, blueberries, um, peanuts, cotton. <coughs> Georgia's the number one forestry state in, in the country, yep. and I've had so many foresters call me, and I'm not exaggerating, so many call me and tell me, the price of diesel fuel is so high, I'm, I'm not going to be able to stay in business. You know the program, and you know yes, that sir. there are adjustments made to the, to the wages you have to pay every year. Yes, Georgia, it was significant this year. So not only are they going to be facing what they are, are already facing with diesel right. prices, with the price of energy and everything else, but now they, that's, it's compounded by the fact that they're going to have to go up on their wages for the H-2A workers, which are essential. They're, those workers are essential to the farm community. So. They are. More people need H-2A than ever because we don't have people in this country that will do farm work. Absolutely. That's exactly right. And, and look, farm, farming's hard. It's tough. It's a tough way to make them in. Right. And, and the, uh, the, the margins are slim. I mean, <laughs> and it only takes one bad year to... to Put you out of business, right. essentially. Good morning, friends. My friends, it is happening. Lawmakers in Congress are making huge progress on passing new legislation. And these bills would have great effect on the American people. But Democrats are raising great concerns on the United States debt limit and how this could affect Social Security payments. Friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video because I will be sharing everything that you need to know. Also, to say thank you for being here every day and for being part of this community, I will be giving away two $75 Walmart gift cards this Friday. If you would like to enter the weekly giveaways, all you have to do, friends, is make sure that you are subscribed to my channel, click and like several of my videos, and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. My friends, the more videos that you comment on, the more likely your chances of winning these giveaways. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy signaled his support today for some cuts in defense spending amid growing tension within the House GOP ranks over the party's approach to a coming debt limit fight. During an appearance on Fox News, Speaker Kevin McCarthy was asked if he was willing to cut defense spending as part of a reported deal within the GOP caucus to freeze spending at 2022 levels. Kevin McCarthy disputed estimates that such a deal would result in a $75 billion cut to defense spending, while also signaling his support for targeted cuts. McCarthy told Fox News, if we go back to 2022 levels, that was what we were spending just two or three weeks ago. That's not cutting defense by $75 billion. The speaker also noted that every single level of government should be looking at ways to spend less taxpayer money. But Speaker McCarthy's remarks come as tensions grow within the House GOP over possible reductions to defense spending. As a result of a deal, McCarthy reportedly struck in his bid to secure the speakership to cap discretionary spending at fiscal 2022 levels it would effectively cut $75 billion from the $857 billion defense budget in fiscal 2023. The Republican House majority also passed its first bill this week in an effort to revoke a boost in spending for the Internal Revenue Service. McCarthy announced a vote saying that it was a first order of business because government should work for you, not against you. The bill passed in a 221 to 210 vote along party lines. It would rescind the budget increase of $80 billion provided to the IRS in last year's Inflation Reduction Act. However, the Biden administration has already threatened to veto the measure, calling it a reckless effort that would make it easier for large corporations to evade paying taxes. With Congress divided between a Republican-led House and a Democratic-held Senate, the policy priorities of either party may pass in a single chamber, but are unlikely to succeed in both. Partisan measures stand little chance of becoming law, and the current Congress is not expected to pass major legislation that advances the partisan platforms of Republicans or Democrats. But some analysts have worried 
that the Republican infighting and the recent rules package are a sign of more alarming things to come. They fear that the House may not be able to approve must-pass legislation, including government budgets and bills to raise a debt ceiling. Congress holds the government's purse strings. It allocates funds to federal agencies and programs. Appropriation bills are passed periodically through Congress. But when funds run out, the federal government must either pass a new budget measure or shut down and suspend its functions. Later this year, Congress needs to approve an increase to the government's borrowing power. It is known as a debt ceiling, and Democrats warn that if the Republican-held House plays politics with the issue, it could lead to disastrous consequences for the United States and global economy. So, dear friends, what are your thoughts about what's going on in Congress? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. The United States is on track to reach a debt ceiling on January 19th unless Congress takes action immediately. So in the past, Congress has avoided this by raising the debt limit. But House Republicans say they will not support another increase unless they get spending cuts or other concessions. In the past, Congress has avoided this by raising the debt limit. But House Republicans say they will not support another increase unless they get spending cuts or other concessions. Defaulting on the debt would be a first in U.S. history and it would force officials to choose between continuing assistance like Social Security, Medicare, and paying interest on the nation's debt. However, a House Republican's payment prioritization plan would call for the Biden administration to make only the most urgent federal payments if the debt limit is reached. The plan may also specify that the Treasury Department continues making payments on Social Security, Medicare, and veterans' benefits, as well as military funding. The White House is relying on bipartisan support to bypass House Republican leadership and to also raise the debt limit. Well, my greatest and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Tuesday morning. My friends, thank you so very, very much for being part of this community and joining me here daily. To say thank you, I will be giving away Walmart gift cards every week. If you'd like to enter this week's giveaway, all you have to do, friends, is make sure that you are subscribed to my channel, click and like several of my videos, and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. Friends, the more videos that you comment on, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you, friends, and have a wonderful and very blessed week.